Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. I am very excited about this video because today we're going to be taking a look at a powerful ARM SoC that we'll be seeing in a lot of single board computers coming up in 2022. And when it comes to the retro gaming community and gaming community in general on these smaller single board computers, this is exactly what we've been dreaming of. This thing is an absolute powerhouse, and when I say the name Rock Chip, a lot of single board computer and ARM enthusiasts kind of shrug it off. But with this new SoC, Rock Chip has definitely knocked it out of the park. This is known as the RK3588. Like I mentioned, we're going to be seeing a lot of single board computers released in 2022 powered by this chip. They're going to be in the price range from $80 up to $150. We're going to get form factors really close to the Raspberry Pi. And I've actually got a few of these boards on pre-order right now. We're just waiting for the manufacturers to finish everything up and ship them out. I will have some more videos coming up. But I did get a chance to test this out early thanks to Firefly. They were kind enough to send over their ITX RK3588 board. This is a mini ITX form factor board and they actually went all out and sent the whole kit. So basically what we have here is a mini ITX PC powered by ARM. So this is their development kit. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's going to be much more expensive than the smaller single board computers being released with the RK3588. But this allows developers to basically go ahead and do whatever they want with this chip. It has everything built in. We've got SATA. It's got RTC. It's got dual HDMI out. It even has HDMI in. It's got a spot for a 4G module, a 5G module, dual M.2 SSDs. I mean, the I.O. is insane, and this isn't for everybody, but it does give us a chance to test the new Rockchip 3588. But when it comes down to it, the heart of this whole unit is the Firefly RK3588J module. This is our RAM, this is our storage, this is the SoC all built into a little module package. And these are the same specs you're going to find in smaller single board computers with this chip. We've got an 8 nanometer 8 core CPU, 4 Cortex A76 cores at 2.4 gigahertz, and 4 Cortex A55 cores at 1.8 gigahertz. The GPU is a Mali G10 MP4. It's got a 6 tops neural processing unit for AI acceleration. This board happens to have 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4X, but the chip supports up to 32 gigabytes. It'll do 8K at 60 FPS or 4K at 120 and basically anything below that. And right now, we've got a build of Android 12, and we've also got two builds of Linux, and that's what I found for this exact board here. We've got Debian and Ubuntu. In this video, we're going to be testing Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop and Android 12. And just to give you an idea here, this is the module with the heatsink installed compared to a Raspberry Pi Zero. So overall, it is a very small little unit, minus all of the I.O. that's included with the ITX board itself. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some testing with Ubuntu and the GNOME desktop, and then we'll move over to Android 12. We're going to be testing out some gaming and emulation with Android, and I can tell you right now, you will be surprised by the performance of this thing. Alright, so first up, I've got Ubuntu here, and this is really fast. This is actually running from the eMMC because they're working on debugging, booting from an SSD, M.2, or over SATA. Hopefully, that'll be fixed in the next couple weeks, because having this with a few different drives installed and being able to boot up to different operating systems would be really awesome. But uh, as you can see, we've got the GNOME desktop. Everything's really snappy. And one thing you usually see with um, other ARM devices is a lot of issues when dragging windows around. This isn't that bad at all. Still got some work to do, and one thing that I've noticed is if we head over to YouTube, we've got a weird issue with video playback. Got kind of a green screen. I'll get right into a little bit here. And it's purple now. Before it was green, so there's definitely a driver issue with this GPU, at least with Firefox. I personally haven't tested Chrome yet, because when I was testing my video playback, I was actually using the MPV media player. So if I open this up, I can just drag and drop something here. Let's go with this one. Just a quick demo video. And it's really smooth. So if I head over here, there we go. So even in Ubuntu right now, video playback is great. Streaming through Firefox has an issue, but I'm sure this will be fixed. But this is a 4K H.264 video, and it's playing super smooth. I really have no way to show what kind of frame rate it's at. But just taking a look at this video, we're not dropping any frames at all. GL Mark. We can let this run. 
just give you an idea here. This was pre-installed with this version of Ubuntu. The software is still relatively new. In a couple weeks, I'll do a full video with this setup just using Ubuntu like a regular desktop, and we'll take a look at all the benchmarks we can run on this thing. There's a couple little games that I want to test, and the first thing I really wanted to test in Ubuntu was a little bit of emulation. First thing I installed was the Dolphin emulator, but unfortunately OpenGL is not initializing for Dolphin. Now this does work in Android, and we'll take a look at it in a second, but I was able to get a few games running on this board like it sits. So we're going to go with something a little lower end. We've got Super Tux Cart, just downloaded it from the Software Center. Get into a little bit of gameplay. It's not a super high-end game, but trying to run this on lower-end chips does uh, usually give it some issues. Right now, we're at full speed, looking really good. But there was one other higher-end game. Well, you know, when it comes to x86, it's a lower-end game. But when playing it on an ARM single-board computer, it's still pretty impressive. And that game is Elder Scrolls 3. So I'm using the Open Morrowind Launcher here. It does take a little while to initialize, and I had a few crashes. But overall performance is looking very positive, especially given how early it is for these GPU drivers. It takes about three or four minutes to load in. Not exactly sure what's going on there. It is a bit choppy, but overall it's really cool seeing this running so early. So obviously, when it comes to running Ubuntu, they still got a lot of work to do, but it is running better given how early it is than other chips in the past from Rock Chips, specifically the RK3399. They also have a Debian build, which I haven't tested yet, and like I mentioned, Android 12, and that's really where we can see how this chip's going to perform, so let's go ahead and move over there right now. Okay, so here's the latest version of Android for this board. It's based on Android 12. There's no Google Play installed, and in the future they do plan on adding it, but right now you do have to sideload your own apps, or you can sideload a third-party app store like I've done with Aptoid. Unfortunately, I don't have any 8K displays laying around to show you that this does 8K, but right now we're at 4K60. From the display settings, we can change the resolution, and as you saw, we've got two HDMI outs here. So we're at 4K60 on this BenQ monitor, and everything is really, really smooth. Really surprised by the performance of this chip, and the first thing we're going to test out here is some 4K video playback from YouTube. Now, I'm actually using YouTube Vanced, but we've got it set up for 4K60. I can't get an 8K stream here, and even if I did, we don't have an 8K display to really show it off. Let me go ahead and find a video, and we'll just go with good old Big Buck Bunny. I've got Stats for Nerds enabled with YouTube Vanced, and uh, right now we are at 4K. Give you a look at that. Got it automatically set to 4K, 60 FPS. Go ahead and full screen it. Start the video. So I know it's a bit hard to see Stats for Nerds up in the top left hand corner, but near the bottom we have the drop frames, which is zero. And actually by the end of this video, we only had three drop frames. They claim this will do 8K, and I really do think it would with the correct format, but when it comes to 4K, this is definitely some of the best performance I've seen, you know, right out of the box with an SOC like this. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, and first up we have Geekbench 5, single core, 506, I thought it'd be a little higher on that single core score, multi, 2319. Nothing too impressive, but you know, when it comes to one of these chips in a single board computer, it's looking pretty decent. Checking out 3D Mark Wildlife, this tests the Vulcan performance of the GPU, overall score, 4,523. And the final benchmark I ran was Antutu. Now recently we got a new handheld device known as the Odin Pro, which is powered by the Snapdragon 845. And running the Antutu benchmark on that, we get a 438,139. And on the new Rock Chip 3588, we're getting a total score of 648,000. So close to 650,000 on this. And if we take a look down the list, CPU's looking really good at 142,000. And when it comes to that GPU score, 247,000. So we should get some really good gaming and emulation performance out of this board. And speaking of gaming, let's go ahead and move over there now. We're going to test out some native Android games and some emulation. And the first native Android game we have to test out is Real Racing 3. I'm using a controller, connected over Bluetooth, no problem there. 
This game looks really good. I'm so used to testing this specific game on lower end chips and it does lower the resolution quite a bit. But with this, I mean, it's a very clean image and we're definitely running at full speed. I wish we had Google Play services because there's a lot more that I want to test here, but I was able to sideload a few other higher end games that work really well on this chip. Like PUBG. So I didn't set up any controller mappers or anything like that. I'm using the mouse here with kind of the on-screen touch controls. We're at medium settings with this here. I've got the frame rate set to high. And I don't think we're quite running at 60. I think we're at 40 FPS, but this is fully playable on this chipset. And since we're on a real Android system here, this is not an emulator. You're not going to be paired up with other people playing on the emulator. So we're playing with other people on their Android devices. And the final native Android game I wanted to test, at least for this video, was Genshin Impact. This is one that I could sideload and get everything downloaded. Again, I don't have any controller mappers set up. I really wish they would add controller support here, so I'm using the on-screen kind of touch controls with the mouse and keyboard. Definitely makes it a little harder to play, but there are third-party mappers out there where you can set up a controller pretty easily with this game. I just didn't do it for this video. If you've ever tried to run this on a lower-end Android device, you know how hard it can be to run. But right now we're at medium settings at 60 FPS and this game is performing really, really well. Got a few dips here and there, a couple hiccups, but this is definitely the best performance that I've seen out of a rock chip SOC. But now it's time to turn our attention over to some emulation. And first up, we've got PSP using PPSSPP using the Vulcan backend running Chains of Olympus at 4X resolution. Got a couple dips here and there, but overall, really great performance when it comes to PSP. And if we can run this at 4X, there's other games out there that will be able to even run at 10X, the easier to emulate stuff. And the last generation high-end rock chip, which was known as the 3399, could hardly run this at 1X. I actually had to turn frame skip on. Moving over to the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii, was not expecting this kind of performance at all, and when I first went into this, I had the whole system set to 4K on this 4K monitor. I wasn't getting great performance, so I figured I'd just go ahead and change the whole system's resolution to 720p, booted the game back up, and we're at 60fps. Now we can't really upscale with this right now, and I don't think we will in the future, but running GameCube and Wii games at their native resolution with the Vulcan back in does work well. And finally, for the emulation testing, we've got some PS2 using Ether SX2. I've got Gran Turismo 4 here using the Vulcan back end at 2x. We're not quite locked at 60, but it's still a very playable experience. And when it comes to Ether SX2, this emulator's already come a long way on different chipsets. I suspect if the developer gets their hands on one of these 3588s, they can make it work a lot better. And I did test one more here. We've got Soul Calibur 3, kind of a harder one to emulate. We're at 1x resolution, Vulcan back in, and we're kind of getting the same performance between OpenGL and Vulcan. Not quite there with this one, but there are playable PS2 games right now the way it is. So overall, I'm really impressed with the performance of the RK3588. I completely understand that the system I tested in this video is way too expensive for somebody to go out and buy for emulation. But these chips will be coming to smaller, cheaper boards very, very soon. They're not going to get as low cost as the Raspberry Pi 4, but they should be pretty affordable in the $100 area. And I think it would be well worth it, especially with good support for Ubuntu and Android. But that's going to wrap it up for my first video on the RK3588. I'd actually like to know your thoughts on this little SoC in the comments below. Would you pay $100 to $150 for a smaller board with the same chip, same performance we saw in this video, and 8 gigs of RAM? Or would you skip it all together and just put that money towards an x86 PC? I mean, are you interested in this chip in a smaller single board computer for emulation or just general computing needs? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I got a couple more videos coming up with this SoC, but in the meantime, if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a link in the description to Firefly's website. But like always, thanks for watching.